Hi, I'm Tony Trishka, and I'm going to show you some simple chords for the five-string banjo. And after I show you those chords, I'm going to show you a simple finger pattern in the right hand that will kind of bring out some of that more of a bluegrass sound uh, to throw onto those rolls. So let's start with G. Now, in regular G tuning, which is where bluegrass lives, you just strum it like that. Anybody, a baby even, could play this. You just draw their hands across the strings. That's G, right like that. You can brush up or brush down. That's G. Then, for the C chord, what you want to do is put your ring on the second fret of the first string, and then the index on the first fret of the second string. And a lot of the times you can just use that as the C chord, but for the full C chord, in addition to those, you want to have the middle on the second fret of the fourth string. So you have the ring on the second fret of the first string, index on the first fret of the second string. I'm talking about the left hand fingers now. Then the third string is open. You're not fretting that at all. And your middle finger goes to the second fret of the fourth string. And you can add that, that short string up here, the fifth string, with that peg two thirds of the way up the neck. There's a C chord. Then I'm going to show you a D seventh chord. And the nice thing about the D seventh chord, if you let go of the ring finger on the first string and keep the index down on the first fret of the second string and lift off that middle finger from the fourth string. So all you have now is the index on the first fret of the second string. That's all you have left from the C chord. If you just take that one note and add the middle finger next to it on the second fret of the third string, second fret of the third string, and now you have these two notes. And if you strum the first four strings, first, second, third, and fourth strings, you can even have that fifth string in there, but that will give you a D seventh chord. And just with these three chords, you can do an awful lot. So you have the G, which is totally open. You have the C, with the ring on the second fret of the first string, the index on the first fret of the second, the open third, and the middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string. And then the D seventh, where you let go of everything except that index finger on the first fret of the second string, and put your middle finger on the second fret of the third string. And there's your D seventh. So it's G, C, D seventh, back to G. You can play this land as your land. You can play Michael Rowe, the Boat Ashore, a lot of folk songs, just anything with three chords, a huge amount of bluegrass songs, just with those three chords. Now that you know these three chords, let's do something more interesting with the right hand rather than just strumming. There are finger patterns in the right hand, right hand finger patterns called rolls. And I'm gonna show you a very simple roll called the alternating thumb roll. It's a four note roll or a four note finger pattern. And there are a number of different ways you can play this, but for right now, let's just do this. Put your thumb in the right hand on the third string, which is that middle string. And then the index finger, your pointer finger, goes to the second string, which is the one just below the third string, heading down this way. And then the thumb goes up here to the top string, the fifth string and the middle goes to the first string. So it's thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, index, thumb, middle. And it's the third string, second string, fifth string, first string. Now you can hit other strings, it doesn't even matter which strings you hit to have it be called a, um, an alternating thumb roll as long as it's thumb, index, thumb, middle. So that's third, second, fifth, first. Now you can vary it instead of starting with the third string, you can start with the fourth string. All the other notes can stay the same. So instead of third, second, fifth, first, you could try fourth. That's the lowest note before the short string. The fourth string, open. So fourth, second, fifth, first, fourth, second, fifth, first. So you, if we put these together, you've got 
It's a very pleasing sound, I think. So again, the thumb on the third, index on the second, thumb on the fifth, middle on the first. That's the first one. Then you go from there to the thumb on the fourth string, index on the second string, thumb on the fifth, middle on the first. You've got starting with the third, then going to the fourth, and all the other notes are the same. This kind of a sound. So let's do one of these patterns for the G, and now let's go to the C chord. Playing that full C chord, and it's third, second, fifth, first, fourth, second, fifth, first, and then a D seventh. Back to G. So. And you can repeat it. Now, if you have trouble playing the whole C chord, you could start with just the index on the first fret of the second string and ring on the second fret of the first string, just the top part of it, and then add the middle when you need it on that second fret of the fourth string halfway through. So right now you just have these two fingers down because it's a little hard to grab the whole thing. Now add the middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string and then to the D7. So one more time, you've got. And that just is gonna get you in the door uh, to play a little bit of the bluegrass style of banjo playing on the five string banjo. And I go into a whole lot more depth on this topic at my Tony Trishka School of Banjo through Artist Works. Uh, and so if this interests you, if you want to get a little deeper into this bluegrass style of banjo playing, uh, feel free to sign up at the Tony Trishka School of Banjo. And thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson.